Potomac horse fever is really something that um, we see sporadically throughout the summer months usually. And it's something that is very regionally distributed. So Alberta tends to have a fair number during the summer months, usually August, September, July, I guess it starts. Um, and then it peters out through the winter. And that really goes to the life cycle of the bacteria that we're dealing with. And it really has to do with the insects that carry that bacteria. And so we know that in our population here, we get aquatic insects, so snails, caddish flies, mayflies. If you're within kind of seven kilometers of a water source, you can have increased number of those insects and then our animals are at a higher risk of becoming infected. You know, he just seemed a little low energy, which could have been so many things. And then, um, then one day he just went, he didn't want to eat in the morning, so which is very unusual for him. So we got him, it took us a little while to get a hold of a vet. We managed to speak to someone that afternoon and they, as soon as I said he had diarrhea and was off his appetite and he had a cough as well, which doesn't typically fit the profile, but it was concerning for us and he was just, he was just off. So we got him in that afternoon and by that stage, he was having some pretty significant diarrhea and was very dehydrated. I'd heard of it, but I didn't really even know what it was. I certainly didn't know the signs or how serious it was. Yes, this year has been a, kind of a bad year. I only started working here um, in the beginning of the year, but what I gathered from last year and the previous years, um, this year has been bad again. Um, I think it has to do mostly with the weather. So we've kind of had a really wet spring um, and not a cold as a winter, um, as I gathered. Um, so I think it's a combination of weather and then horses being exposed to the bacteria in and itself. Um, so a lot of horses might be infected, but they don't necessarily come into our clinic um, because they're just maybe a little lethargic, are not eating as much, but then a couple of days later, they're fine. They never present with, or they never have, you know, full-blown diarrhea. The ones that we see are typically the very sick horses. So the owners, you know, have given them maybe a couple of days and they're still not eating, they're still not drinking, and they have um, the diarrhea um, that is pretty severe. Some can get better on their own. I would say when it's in the milder cases, so the horses that are just kind of not eating, not drinking, um, and they can, you know, kind of recover on their own. But the horses that have full-blown diarrhea, or have prolonged periods of not eating or drinking, we get more and more in, you know, behind on fluids and electrolyte basically, um, and we get more and more lethargic, and we basically go in this downward spiral where we're not feeling well. So those horses typically need aggressive treatments.